God had already been up for some hours over the city of Jerusalem. Already, pilgrims and visitors were pouring in through the gates, mingling with merchants from villages round about. Get your holy water here! Can't get into the holy temple without holy water! Get your pass
Though it was never easy to make one's way through the crowd, it was especially difficult for a procession that started out from the governor's palace. At its head was a Roman centurion, mocking and cold. The procession moved at a snail's pace. The condemned men each carried a heavy bar of wood with its cross piece on which he was to be executed. They all moved forward out of the courtyard of Pilate's palace and made for one of the gates leading out of the city.
Meanwhile, outside the city of Gate, Simon of Cyrene had just arrived in Judea and was about to enter the holy city. As he neared the city gate, he began to hear shouting that grew louder and louder. He thought there must have been something strange about it all. But before he could understand it, he was caught up in the procession and swept out through the gate again. He had been captured by the procession, walking along beside three men who staggered under the weight of crosses above heavy wood on which Simon knew they would soon be put to death. Perspiration moistened each drawn face, but to that one to which he had been so attracted, that one that was strangely appealing, it was a face that arrested him, and Simon felt his gaze returning again and again to that one face. He noticed that blood was trickling down from the wounds in the brow, and then he saw what caused it, a twig of long thorn briars twisted round in the shape of a crown and pushed down on the forehead. But it was his eyes. It was the terrible look in his eyes that fascinated, awed, and frightened Simon. The look that passed between them, Simon never forgot as long as he lived. For no man can look at Jesus and remain the same. Again, just as these two looked at each other, the man with the cross stumbled. And the soldiers moved more by impatience than by pity, seeing that the Nazarene was almost too exhausted to carry his cross any farther, laid hands on Simon and forced him to lift it up.
fringe of the crowd until hot tears filled his eyes and his heart broke to pieces. John stood beside Mary and supported her. The other women were weeping. But as soon as the Nazarene had mounted his final pulpit, as soon as the cross had fallen with a thud into the pit they had dug for it, the shouting broke out again.
thunderstorm was blowing up from the mountains, and the clouds hid the sun, and it was strangely dark. The people looked up at the sky and became frightened. Women took little children by the hand and hurried back to the city before the storm would break. It was an uncanny darkness. It had never been as dark before. Something terrible must be about to happen. Women stood praying for Jesus and for the thieves. The centurion was silent, although every now and then he would look up at Jesus with a strange look in his eyes. The soldiers were silent too. Their gambling was over. They had won and lost.
have passed away, but the rains of the centuries with our callous tears have not yet washed away the blood from the rotting wood of a deserted cross, nor have the winds covered the footprints in the sands of Judea. Calvary still stands, and you and I erect the cross again and again every time we sin. The hammer blows are still echoing somewhere in the caverns of your heart and mind every time we deny him. Every time we sin against him or fail to do what he commanded, he is being crucified again and again and again. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? I was. Were you? Thank you.